So, hi everyone, my name is Elisha. My Twitter handle is just my name. And uh, today I just realized that I'm actually a Rubyist, so I got to check that out. So, um, I created Tech Ladies, and today I'm going to share more about it with you. So, Tech Ladies is a community for women to connect, learn, and advance as programmers. So, we focus on teaching programming to women without a tech background, and we aim to bring more women into the industry. So before I begin, since we are talking about how we built Tech Ladies in Singapore, I need to edit my title. Um, and second of all, I want to clarify something. It's really subtle, and I don't think that you could see it unless I point it out to you. But I have to be honest that the moustache is a lie. I'm just really trying to come across as non-threatening. Ah, an awkward joke. So, <laughs> in this talk, what I want to share with you more about is uh, what Tech Ladies is about, what we do, and also the lessons learned along the way. This is not a lie. But before I start, I want to share why gender diversity is important to me and why I believe in the work that we do. So, we have all benefited from a community like this, right? Like even from a bunch of online tutorials, free tools, or just getting help from one another. We have all gained something from this community. So I feel really strongly about this. Like, why should anyone feel that programming is not for them? Because they don't look like a programmer, right? I believe that everyone should be able to learn programming without feeling like they don't belong in the community. And I'm not just talking about women. It could be you know, people from all kinds of backgrounds, races, nationalities, or physical abilities. So gender diversity was simply the area I chose to focus on because it's what's something that resonated to me most. Because I'm not a software engineer. So Tech Ladies is my passion project, and I have a day job in an MNC working on developer programs. So I'm neither a developer nor a programmer, just developer programs. And uh, the story, my story of creating Tech Ladies started in 2011 when I picked up Rails because I couldn't find a tech co-founder for my now date startup. So that's when I was exposed to the developer community and the wonders of programming, which I'm sure all of you agree that writing codes is amazing. Although occasionally you feel like flipping a laptop. So the programming allows us to express ourselves, to communicate an idea with the software instead of words. And the things that we create can really help ourselves or someone else. And the people here are amazing. Initially, I felt out of place at tech meetups because I don't dress the same, I don't talk the same. I crack funny jokes. So, but as I get to know more people here, I realize that the community is really helpful. And you know, that, that led me to think, uh, to understand that programming is meant to be accessible by all. So where are all the women? Is it not interesting for them? Or are there actually some other issues stopping women from learning how to code? I didn't know how to solve this problem until a friend asked me to help him at a Rails Girls session in 2014. So Rails Girls is a global non-for-profit community that teaches women how to code with Rails. So it was through the experience of interacting with other women that I discovered that there's a joy in teaching people how to code. And you know, it's, it's very exciting when you see their eyes light up when they realize that, oh, this is programming, this is so easy, I can do this. So that's why when I was in between jobs, I wanted to build something that can bring more women into the industry through education. And that's how we created Tech Ladies, which is, a, again, a community for women to connect, learn, and advance as programmers. So we do three things, community, education, and opportunity, where we're trying to reach women who are keen in learning about the tech industry all the way to existing programmers. And I'll share what each of these mean. So we want to bring a place where women can find and learn from one another. We also want to teach women basic programming skills. And lastly, we want to help women who wants to enter the tech industry to make the switch. So under these three pillars are six programs. So I'm going to share about what each program does. So feel free to steal or copy any of this you see here, implement it in your workplace or community. So I often get asked if I'm worried about competition amongst women groups in tech. So I don't believe in competition because we're all working towards the same goal. And this, I think that the sooner that we reach the goal, the sooner we can go solve another social problem, which is great. So feel free to steal or copy anything here. So I'll start talking more about the um, boot camp under the opportunity pillar. Fancy transition. So the boot camp, the Tech Ladies Boot Camp, is a part-time accelerated learning program to help women with basic programming skills to become professional programmers. So the participants are guided by industry experts to create products for non-profits. So these are actually products that are being used in a while. So 
if you notice this photo, there are men here. So it shouldn't be. So that's another thing, right? Like we are four women, but we are not anti-men. So we recognize that men have something to play too. So, and uh, since we started Tech Ladies last January, we so far so far we have about three. We have three batches of bootcamp. Twenty-nine women have graduated from the program. They are air stewardess, gymnastics teacher, customer service rep, photographer, and a, a bunch of non-tech roles before the bootcamp. And seven of these ladies currently hold a technical role, with more being in the tech industry as non-engineering roles. I think we can clap to that. <laughs> Thank you. So through the bootcamp, we have helped nine nonprofits to solve their pain points with technology. Some of the examples we have created include a film submission app, an adoption app, a classroom management app, and a donor management app. So these are apps that typically replaces email, paper, or Excel. I hope there are no Microsoft people here. We're good. Cool. So, and it's not just about teaching them technical skills, right? We also help the bootcamp participants with exposure by publishing articles about them and pushing them to do talks. So I want to share the stories of two ladies in particular. First is Clara on the left. So she found her love for develop, uh, web development when she was a teen, but she could not pursue a CS degree because she did badly for her A-levels. And that started up an unfulfilling career in something that she's not keen in before she decided to do a fashion business. So fashion was something she could do, but it was not something that she could see herself doing for the rest of her life. So that's when she decided that she wanted to get back into tech, but she was struggling with the, uh, well, learning how to code on her own before she joined the bootcamp. And today, her coach at the bootcamp actually gave her an internship, which she then converted into a junior role. And she has since returned to Tech Ladies as one of our speakers. It's pretty amazing. The other story I want to highlight is Sing Tan. She's right there. So Sing Tan was uh, kicked out of a master's program in chemistry, so which led her to start a, a customer service officer career when a friend of her told her about programming. And that intrigued her, got her started in uh, interest in, in tech. So um, I remember how Sing Tan would sometimes stay to like 1 a.m. up at night after her full-time job to learn how to code. And uh, today, so she's a developer. Today she's a developer at a startup. She has spoken at RDRC in front of Matt, and she has also come back to Malaysia to organize a Tech Ladies workshop. It's just amazing to see how people come back to pay, pay it forward, come back to contribute back after receiving help from the community. So a few lessons learned. First of all, I honestly didn't expect it to work. Maybe it's kind of weird to, to say it now. But you know, finding, educating, and curating non-NGOs uh, who are not technical Getting developers with full-time jobs to, to volunteer at least 100 hours, and trusting beginners to create a product for a, with a real-world purpose sounded crazy, uh, which, I, which I'm very happy that in practical it worked better than on paper. Second thing I learned is that having an end goal in mind is really helpful for beginners because it keeps them motivated to create something complete. Next thing I learned is that people really want to help even if the ask is really big, uh, but they need some direction on how and what to help on. And also, marketing is important. It's not just about technical skills, but it's also um, marketing in highlighting women and also bringing them into the industry. So all in all, I think the secret sauce here uh, on how our graduates could compete with people who are, who are CS grads or graduates of full-time bootcamp is that we provide a learning objective we give people a structure to learn, and we have the community to provide references and opportunity, which I think is a recurring term that we've seen in the talks today. There's a lot of community in there, so it's really amazing. The next thing I want to talk about is the uh, Tech Talks. So the Tech Talks was created by Kate, one of the bootcamp graduates. So in this Tech Talk, we feature two to three female beginners giving technical talks. So by putting these beginners on stage to share, it helps them build their confidence and inspire other women in the, in the audience that programming is possible for them. So Jin Qi, who you're here tomorrow, uh, she gave her first public talk at our Tech Talk event. And she has seen done like amazing job in public speaking. I'm really excited for her talk. No pressure. So because of the nature of these events, what I learned is that it's very important to communicate the right expectations to the audience. Because they're not here to listen to experts. And so, so that's, the, that's the main sort of like thing that you have to be clear about. 
And they need to know that we are here because we're part of a supportive community and to provide peer learning. Another thing is that we hear from our community when they see this tech industry, they don't really know like what is it, like what are the different roles in there. So we decided to create this new series of events called Office Visits, which Ling over there has took on the role in organizing. So in this, in this series, we bring our community to different companies to hear about hear from the stories of uh, the female employees working there. So this, this photo is pretty interesting because this was after the official panel discussion. So people were just mingling with each other and all of a sudden there is yet another informal panel discussion going on. So the next thing I want to talk about is the programs under the education pillar starting from the coding weekend, which is pretty straightforward. This is a, a coding weekend. So it's initiated by Xingtian, and it's a two-day workshop where women learn about basic Ruby, Ruby on Rails, and CSS, HTML. So it's usually conducted outside of Singapore because we have a lot of groups serving women in Singapore, but the same can't be said in other places when you go out of the country. So this photo was taken earlier this year when Xingtian organized a coding weekend here in Kuala Lumpur for 80 women. So some of our assistant coaches are also here as well. I just want to give a shout out to Zui and, uh, Zhu and Gui. So the curriculum that we use is available on our GitHub org, so let me know if you want to bring it to your city. Now, one thing we learned that doing a workshop overseas is that working with someone local is extremely important to help us with a good venue partnership and marketing. So other than workshops, we also run study groups. This is a self-reliant study group for beginners where we just meet at a cafe to learn and practice computer science with one or two mentors joining us to answer technical questions. So it's really easy to get started. But honestly, it's difficult to maintain momentum because people come and go. So the last programs that I want to share are the Tech Ladies Go and Eat. Go Eat. So Tech Ladies Go is basically us sharing events that other people are organizing so that women can find one another to attend together. So I remember once, I, it sounds very trivial, but I remember once when I shared about a hackathon in our Tech Ladies group, and women were actually asking if they could go. They were asking like, oh, am I, am I good enough to go? I'm not very technical, but can I go? Uh, but what happened is that they ended up encouraging one another and forming teams so that they were not alone. And for many of them, this was their first hackathon that they have attended. So it basically is a get together for the community because we love tech and we love food. Just an excuse to get out. So I hope this overview of what we do at Tech Ladies was helpful in getting you to start thinking about how you can make the Ruby community even more awesome. And now I want to switch gears in talking about what I've learned starting an initiative like Tech Ladies. So starting a passion project has a lot of benefit. The main benefit is that you can choose what you want to do and how you want to do it. And that means you can put all the cats you want in your presentation. And this is my best slide, so take a photo, please. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, and, and I think what's more is that it's, it's extremely rewarding to see the impact of your work. And something so small, uh, something so small like teaching them how to code can, can really have a very lasting impact in their lives. And second of all, you don't need permission on skills you want to gain. Like, if you want to lead people, go ahead. If you want to try new ideas, go ahead. You don't need someone to give you a permission to do it. And what I realized that in doing that, it actually came back and benefited my career because the skills that I gain in Tech Ladies help with my full-time job. And employers want to know what you're passionate about, and your side projects show it. And lastly, you don't need to care about profitability or business model. And of course, it's, it's definitely rewarding to see when you meet and work with people who share the same beliefs. But my biggest lesson that I've learned is this. I don't need to get to a specific level of skills or be good enough before I am able to start contributing meaningfully. So before I started helping out at events, I thought the only way to contribute back to the community was by contributing to repos. And I felt really demoralized when I tried following the advice of getting started with documentation. If you heard that advice, it's terrible. Because to be good at documentation, you need, you need to be good at that, that framework and a, lang a spoken language, which is very difficult. So, so when I, I, I started to be able to contribute back 
when I stop focusing on what I don't know how to do and start focusing on what I know how to do and could do. And I realize that there's actually a lot of things. So before we end, I want to share some easy ideas for you to start thinking about contributing back. So first of all, organizing things. So events and conferences need someone to organize, bring people together, order food, yeah, sponsorship, and a lot of emailing. So this might not sound exciting, but you really never know the real impact of the event. So Gabrielle, who's not here, but will be here tomorrow speaking as well, she learned about the tech industry at a tech ladies event, and that's where she found her passion in tech. So much so that she postponed her college to start her career as a developer which is truly amazing. You should talk to her about it when you see her tomorrow. And if event organizing isn't your cup of tea, you can also help out at events. So there's a couple of ways that you can help out. So you can design collateral, like how Natalie, who's also here, designed all the little icons we use because she's, she saw what I did and it was crap. We both agree it's crap. You could also source for vendors, MC at the event, or talk to your manager about hosting or sponsoring a meetup. Or you could share your knowledge. So you don't need to know a lot in order to be able to share what you know. So this is the workshop we ran for tech ladies for 60 women learning CSS. And one thing I learned is that the problems that they run into are actually not bugs. Most of the time, they're just like this typo. They forgot their closing tag or they're in the wrong, wrong folder. And this should not be difficult with, for anyone with some basic programming skills to help. So you don't need to be at level 100 to teach someone at level 0. You just need to be at level 2 or 3 to be good enough. And if someone asks you a question that you don't know, what do you do? You Google, right? Google is always here for you. And if teaching isn't your, your thing, you can also share what you've learned from events. So a couple of uh, our workshop attendees wrote notes about what they've learned and shared it out uh, to other newbies who, who they found to be really helpful. Or you can do what Michael do, who is also a Tech Ladies Bootcamp coach right there. So he has created engineers.sg where his team would attend most of the tech meetups in Singapore, film them and upload them onto this site. It's extremely labor intensive, but by doing that, people can learn from events that they have missed. Or if you come across someone working on something interesting, encourage them to present about it. Too many people think that they are not good enough and could really use the encouragement from you. So I have received one uh, such encouragement myself. So. So I signed up to present a lightning talk at Ruby Kaigi after party last year, and I was really nervous about it because if there's one conference that you freaked out at, it's at Ruby Kaigi. So, so I actually wrote into the organizers, organizers to see if that I could give a talk, and this was the reply, and I eventually did give the talk because I do agree that, yeah, like if they're all drunk, they probably wouldn't know if I messed up, so it's quite good. The last thing on my list is this, like every little thing counts. Like helping out doesn't have to be a big event or like a passion project. Little things like keeping up, uh, picking up the trash, packing up chairs, inviting women to attend or speak at events, highlighting their accomplishment, or just compliment someone for a job well done. So Jimmy, thank you for organizing this conference. But you're probably not here. And the contributing to the tech community goes beyond just writing codes, documentation, fixing bugs. And it certainly does not have to be technical. It's about creating ways for the community to get together, share knowledge, enabling, to, enabling others to teach more people, or by making the community a friendly place for everyone. And with that, I hope this talk gave you an idea on how you can start contributing right now. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your contribution to the community. Thank you. Thank you so much for your talk and your contribution for coming down here. Oh, okay. Yeah, you had to come all the way from down from Singapore. Anybody have a question that you'd like to ask about community building, about contributing back to the community? Oh, sure, Nick. Um, as a company that employs uh, developers um, at different levels of the experience, how can we help out with the phase that comes uh, later for, for tech ladies, uh, attendees? We, we want to be at the other end of that pipeline that help you know, people go into the, the career part of this. Um, what can we do for them? Give us freebies. I think like uh, other than that, give us jobs. I think that's the best thing ever. Uh, I think it's about um, telling, letting us know. Um, I think before that, I guess like even before that, making sure that your environment is conducive for women and also for learning. 
Because a lot of women, especially for the, the, the community that tech ladies serve, these are people who have missed the opportunity to be formally educated in CS. So a lot of times they can only do boot camp, and you know, like, I don't, I, I don't think that three months boot camp, when you stack it out with a CS grad, they are at a disadvantage. They need to catch up a lot, um, which is why I think having a conducive environment um, that focuses a lot on teaching and empowering junior developers would be like the most important step. And of course, like, you know, giving, giving internships, junior roles, swag, mentorship, all those basic stuff, I think that, will, that help too. But that's the most important thing is the right learning environment. That's awesome. Yep. Any other question, guys? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Alex. Of course, Alex. <laughs> uh, with the recent uh, problems in paper that was released in Google, for example, yep. and the problem with Uber, how we as a community can identify the toxic environment? How we can fix the toxic environment to welcome more ladies into the community and into diversity? And what you, with your experience, what kind of problems you see the most often came up and how people solve it? So, so, um, so the question is about how can we make sure that the environment is not toxic for women who are thinking of entering the industry, taking into consideration what has happened at Uber and also at Google, right? Okay. So it's, it's definitely a very tough question. Um, and at the same time, I, I would say two things. First of all, listen for the women who are already in the industry, listen to them. Because I feel that a lot of times, even, even if you are well intended, uh, you have very good intentions, sometimes you don't know what's the best way to help. And I think asking your, your teammates is a good start. And for getting more women into the industry, what I learned is that because this woman, this, these people, they are not from the industry yet. So a lot of times they don't know what's happening within our industry, which is great. We can trap them now. So, so I, would say, I would say, you know, don't focus so much on telling people that the sexism in my industry, you know, you got to watch out, but I'm here for you. They'll probably freak them out. It's not like the biggest problem that they, wanna, they are facing now. The kind of problems that I face is more of like, I don't know what to learn, and when I have a problem, I don't know where I can go. Um, what are the different roles in the industry? What's good for me? Uh, these, are, these are more, oh, am I good enough? That's the thing that they, they always ask. Like, the whole hackathon thing, I don't get it, because like, people were asking me if, I could, if they could attend the hackathon. I'm like, I'm a judge. I don't even know what I'm doing there. So yeah, why not? So the confidence thing is, is a, a common theme that I see across which I don't know, is it a woman thing or is it just like a beginner thing? I don't know, but it's a thing. Thank you so much. And I want to, I'm sorry, but I want to stand up and applause for the initiative like that. It's really important for us as a community, Absolutely. And as a technical people, to <coughs> welcome all kind of people into the community and everything. Absolutely. So, uh, I also have my bootcamp coaches, uh, Jin Ti and Michael, so you can also pick for them. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, this year, we've, like, uh, we've had a lot of more women speakers in comparison to last year, which is amazing, and it has actually drawn a lot more women attendees. So this has been a great plus for all of us. Any, any final questions? Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, one thing is that uh, around the world, you often have women who are kind of pushed very traditional gender roles, and uh, the mentality from the beginning itself is Yeah, so you'll be amazed like how early gender stereotypes begin. So my colleague was telling me that this little, like her daughter was like two or three, she wanted a Spider-Man tattoo, stick on tattoo, of course. Um, don't know why I'm saying that. Uh, but you know, another girl who was about six year old told her that that's not for girls, it's so ugly. And like she, the mom, my, co my coworker was really shocked at how early things start. Um, so I don't really have like, I think it's very culturally specific 
it depends on the culture that you're from and also the, 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 the market um, social values in general. But I do think that having role models, seeing that someone with similar background can do it, means that it can be done. That's one. The second thing is opportunity. Are there workshops, um, online resources, uh, support for people to get exposed to this kind of stuff? That that would be two. Does that answer the question? Cool. Very cool. If that's all the questions we have, we've got to take a short break. But before that, one more round of applause. Thank you so much, Elisha. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Okie dokie. So, yep. uh, just to interrupt. Like, so I, just as any, a lot of other speakers, I have stickers. So just come in oh, and get me. Yep. Now they're just showing up.